today is six months since Hurricane Harvey hit us here in Houston. And I wanted to kind of talk about our experience with it. It was pretty catastrophic. It was pretty devastating. Um, I know a lot of people who lost absolutely everything. They lost their house, they lost their belongings, they lost their cars, they're still not back in their homes. We were very lucky in the fact that of what we did lose, we've been able to stay in our home and that that's really been lucky for us. But I wanted to show I wanted to show what where we are in the process and kind of talk about how the, the hurricane hit us. For the school district and when the hurricane became imminent, we closed down. I believe it was Thursday we didn't have school, Friday we didn't have school, and Friday night was when we flooded. David unfortunately was not home, so there was a tornado warning which went off constantly that night. But this one I was watching the news, it was a little closer, a little more worrisome. So I grabbed little man out of bed, I grabbed Sydney who was still awake and we went into the closet with the dogs and hung out and waited for about 15 20 minutes i was texting my friend and she was doing the same thing and we decided that the threat had passed and so we came out of the closet i put both the kids on our bed in the master bedroom and we just hung out there for a little bit let them watch their ipads sydney got off the bed and she said mommy there's water and i thought well okay I've, you know a dog must have had an accident it's raining a whole lot out there it's not a big deal and then she said no mommy there's a lot of water and i hopped down and sure enough our house was flooding and i had never really experienced this so i grabbed some towels and stuck them in front of the door that really didn't help anything so for the next little bit we ran around putting everything up as high as it could go turning off the electricity trying to figure out what what I could save what I couldn't luckily the baby uh, was just fine on the bed he didn't try to get down Sydney listened really well she hopped up onto the bed and stayed there and so once I got everything up I called David before I got everything up and told him what was happening and he was trying to get home and that's that's a whole separate story to tell once I got that all done then I realized that the water was not stopping it was still coming so i had to run around and put everything back up higher so we ran around trying to do that i have to say my at the time four-year-old was amazing i i would yell for her she would come down the the flooded hallway and help me with stuff and we got everything up as high as we could and after a while we finally realized that that was about all we could do and we were just going to sit and watch the water come in my english mastiff puppy jumped on my daughter's bed and didn't get to come back down because i wasn't gonna go get her she was too big and my yorkie stayed on the bed and we just watched the water keep coming up it was it was pretty terrifying to tell you the truth like thinking about it now really I can't think of the right words. It really just kind of takes you back to it. It makes you think about how terrifying it was being home with two small children, the dogs. Um, I was still texting my friend from before and she was trying to find someone to come get us, but I wasn't going anywhere without David. We were pretty safe on the bed. The water wasn't that high. Um, it was probably mid shin. It was, it was high. It was, I mean, it was not easy to walk around. The water had started to come back up through the toilets and the bathtub. Um, so that was kind of scary because that was dirty water. So that was pretty, pretty gross. We just sat there and then when David came home, it was pretty shocking because we opened the door and water went rushing out. So the water outside had started to recede, but the water inside hadn't. And then that was when the next morning we, um, you know, I tried to get a little bit of sleep, but David didn't get any sleep. And the next morning was when reality hit, when you started to walk around and see the floorboards were gone, the walls were falling apart, our nothing was where it belonged. It was pretty intense, honestly. It was intense, it was intense. Six months ago and it makes me wanna cry all over again. But I'm glad we are where we, where we are now. We had some amazing friends and strangers who jumped in and helped us and I cannot thank them enough people who came in and assisted us physically, who gave us donations, who brought us hot meals, um, just offered their support. It was just incredible. All of those people who took our kids for the day so we could work, we had to rip out drywall, rip out carpeting, take out wet belongings. We then had to inventory belongings. It was a very long process and I am, obviously I was talking with a friend today, just now starting to feel like we are getting back to a sense of normal. There's still stuff to do, but I do truly feel that we are getting ourselves back to a sense of normal. 
this has been a long journey and I I have a friend who's their house is just getting started in recovery so this this is really a long journey for those of us who were really hit by Hurricane Harvey and, and have a long way to go but let's look at the house let's see where we are in terms of progress and what we still have to do So let's start here in the living room. So you can see we have our TV mounted. The walls are done. There's a baseboard. I mean, the walls are painted. Still need some baseboards there. I mean, we have couches. We have a dining room table back. Baseboards. I mean, we have walls up. That's that's just incredible to see. Then we walk into the kitchen, it's a little bit different. Um, the kitchen has not been done yet. So as you can see, the drywall has been patched. However, our cabinets, not so much. You can see they're still open, exposed, they're falling. Um, I don't know if you guys can see the dip there, but the bottoms are gonna fall out soon. However, this part has been painted. Those doors are gonna come out and be replaced. This pantry is gonna get fixed. So a lot in the kitchen still has to be done. All the counters or all the cabinets have to be replaced. The drywalling has to be replaced. This little nook has to be finished. Gonna have a little bar area, sink and cabinet there. But that's, that's fabulous. And once again, we have paint, we have drywall. I think for the most part, the back of our house is done. Don't have doorknobs on doors, that's okay. But we have doors, hey, we have doors. I mean, I think the kids' rooms are done except for doorknobs. Even the closets are painted. And I'll say like, these guys did a great job. This is like small details here, but they even painted like the uh, curtain rod, which is amazing. I loved that. Small details, but important when you're looking at the whole scope of things. Trim around the windows has to go up. So once again, when you go into a bathroom, the bathrooms, are not done. The, sh the drywall still has to be cut back out of here, re-put in. Cabinet has to be taken out, but we have a door. So, and then, oh, this right here. This is five-year-old ingenuity. Her door knob, her door is hooked to her light switch so that no one can open her door while she's gone. Not very strong, apparently. Her room, she has a bed again. Like their furniture, her dresser was falling apart. We got a little bit over a foot inside, which, you know, some people got multiple feet and we know that we're very lucky. But um, once again, you know, I, I don't see anything in these kids' rooms that has to be done aside from doorknobs, which is, you know, right there. She's gonna miss her little security system. Should probably redo her security system, huh, babe? Don't want any burglars getting into the five-year-old room. Okay, and then we come into our room. Got our new bed. So there's still a few little things like there's, uh, actually, I don't know. Is there anything in our room that's not done? Our bathroom, once again, cabinets. So really what's left is cabin cabinets and finishing touches. But everything else is basically done. It was pretty intense. So you don't realize how overwhelming it can be until it happens, which is pretty insane. I'm really happy to be in the place that we are now to have full use of all of our rooms at one point when they were putting down the flooring. Because before we had wood laminate, all of those boards just started floating during the flood. When I was trying to put stuff up, I had wood boards hitting me. I had to like navigate over them. They were they were everywhere. It was it was a mess. We had carpeting in the rooms and when you would walk there was huge bubbles of water under the carpet. You had to, to do them. We had this little girl hiding on a bed because she was scared. Were you scared during the flood? Were you scared of the water? Yeah. You were, huh? Yeah. So, you know, it was just, it was a crazy time and it's, it's been a long time to get back to normal. I really did not feel like it would take this long to start to feel normal and we really are, but let me tell you, when you have to have people constantly coming to continue fixing your house, to not know where everything is because you're constantly moving it from room to room for the, the contractors and it's hard. Once again, I'm just so glad that we were in the position we were and my thoughts go out to all of those that are still just starting construction, haven't even began because it's, it's a long road and I'm, I'm glad to be where we are. I'm glad that we have our family that we were safe in that regard thanks for watching if you have a great day